We are in module eight, part two, continue on employability. Again, most important chapter in this book, because this applies to any career you could choose. So we are in part two. And so being a good employee is knowing how to work with schedules. All right. In the construction industry, schedules are critical because there's it's chronological, like you have to get it framed before you can install the rough and electrical plumbing, before you can do the insulation, before you can do the drywall, before you can paint, before you can put on your trim. Right? There's all these different steps and they have to happen in that order. You can't go framing to trim and skip the in-between steps. And so scheduling is so important and being able to hold a schedule and use your time wisely is key because let's say the plumber, he says, oh yeah, I'll be there tomorrow to put in that, um, those drains for you so you can get your insulation in. And then he doesn't show up because he didn't feel like it, right? He drank too much the night before or something else came up. He overslept, whatever it is. He's like, eh, I'll just do it some other time. And that messes up your schedule because you had the insulation scheduled the day after the plumber because he was supposed to be done, right? This is a huge problem, really annoying. So if you want to make a lot of money if you want to work your way up be able to get the job done in the time frame that you said you would do it i worked on jobs where if we were a day late it was two thousand five hundred dollars every day we were late um, if it was like past the contracted schedule and there's some jobs it's even more like that was kind of small but there could be even more the fines so your company is going to lose a lot of money if you're messing up the work and so this also means you're doing it right the first time right so you don't want to have to redo your work. So you're going to make sure you measure twice, cut once kind of thing. You know what I mean? You're not going to mess up because that's lost time, which messes up scheduling. So you got to stay on schedule, learn how to read a schedule and do your time, use your time wisely. Yes, sometimes things come up where you get behind, but don't let it be because you're just wasting time. All right, stay on schedule because it's key to be able to keep a job moving forward. You need that schedule. All right. So project delays, the big things that cause it is material shortages, right? And so that's sometimes that happens. Sometimes you go to order your window and you need it in two weeks and they say, oh, sorry, you're not going to get your window for six weeks. And that holds everything up or something gets damaged. You finally get your doors or windows and one of them's broken. You waited six weeks to get it. And now one of them's broken. You got to wait another six weeks to get the new one, right? So stuff happens. It's out of your control. Sometimes that happens. Um, we got equipment. Sometimes your truck will break down or your forklift or something. It breaks down or a tool breaks. And so that's a, another thing that's going to cause a delay. Your, yeah, your tool breaks. But the biggest reason that causes a project delay is right here at the bottom. I'm trying to move it so you can see it right here. Labor shortage, tardiness, absenteeism. This is it. This is the biggest reason of delays in projects is because people just don't show up to work. The hardest thing to find right now is an employee who will just show up. You show up on time at work, I'm telling you, you're going to succeed and you're going to make a lot of money right now because they need people with just some work ethic. And so you just got to show up. All right. And so don't delay the schedule just because you don't feel like it. there's no such thing. I know in the movies, they make it sound cool. Hey, I'm going to call in sick today because I don't feel like coming in. No, you're ruining everything. And that's going to kill your success. It's going to, if you do that more, you're not going to hold a job. You're not going to work your way up and you're going to find yourself at McDonald's as a grown man because, or woman, because you can't hold a job, right? Because you just won't show up. They need people to show up. So don't be a reason for delay. The things that are in your control, control them. I get some of those other things out of your control, but what's in your control, take ownership of your life, take responsibility and get it done. All right, so personal social skills, we'll talk about this. Um, but when you're trying to get a job, it might be on a future slide, we want to make sure that you're aware you're going to have to pass a drug test. All right. Almost every trade person I talk to, what's so sad is the first two things that they say in an employee. It's not, hey, have you been trained in this? Do you have experience in this? The first two things they say are, can you pass a drug test and will you show up on time? That's it. Basically, you can get any job right now if you can pass a drug test and show up to work because they're desperate in need for that. That's it. You don't need any experience, you don't need any training. Yes, you'll get paid more with that. But if you can show up, pass a drug test, you got the job, right? They're in that much of a need. And that's what they're looking for. That's literally the first question they're going to ask you. So make sure you take ownership of your choices, of your life success, 
because drugs aren't going to get you there. Even if it's legalized, which is going to be here shortly, it's not, you can't get a job. You can't hold a job. You can't show up to a job site with anything in your system, right? That's a fail, just like you can't show up to a job site drunk. And so take ownership. It's not worth it. If you want to succeed, if you want to be wealthy, if you want to just be able to have the comforts of life, that is not taking, doing those choices is going to ruin it for you. You're not going to get anywhere, right? So make wise choices. And so be dependable, show up again, organizational skills. Don't be a mess. Um, competence. So just do, don't play dumb, like do what you know how to do. Don't hold yourself back. I know my dad had an employee. He worked there for 40 plus years at this company and he was always a laborer. He never tried or never tried to learn and become more competent. And so he never got the higher pay of being a master carpenter because he wanted to stay at the laborer because he didn't want to have to think. And that's fine. I mean, he made a living, but he never got anywhere. He had stayed at the bottom level because he didn't want to try. Um, be honest. One of our class themes is show up, right? Work hard once you get there and be honest. So that involves passing the drug test. That involves not lying. If you mess up, own up to it and say, I messed up. It's better to fix it as soon as you messed up versus later on. Everyone messes up. I mess up in class all the time. A sign of a good carpenter isn't not messing up ever. It's how fast can you fix your mistake? How fast can you problem solve? Right? And so these other things, professionalism and good grooming habits go a long way. Don't show up looking a mess to an interview. Show up for the part. If you're a plumber, dress like a plumber. If it's going to be something else, wear a suit and tie if you're going in for an office job. Like dress the part, make yourself look professional and just watch what you say. Watch your mouth. Um, yeah, I don't know, stereotypically, trades workers are cussing all the time like sailors. But if you want to, again, get the higher rates, the high end jobs, your boss wants to be able to trust you in these homes. Say there's a little kid and a mom at the house and you're the plumber fixing your stuff. They don't want you cussing in front of that little kid or that mom. Right. And so make sure you're taking on, again, responsibility for your choices. What does your personal social skills, what is that saying about you? Are you put together or do you look like a bum, right? And when you're looking for companies, again, I can't emphasize this enough. Do they all look sharp dressed? Is their employer providing them with nice company t-shirts? Are they driving nice company vehicles, right? Because that's a company that's taking pride in branding who they are and trying to make themselves look good. If they do that, probably their work is going to be good and they're going to be fun to work for. So it goes a long way. See what else we got. Work ethic. I can't emphasize it again. Show up and work. Show up on time. Don't make excuses. Show up every day consistently. Take your vacation when you need to, but don't waste to show up and do your work. That's what we need right now. And there's scholarships. Your trade schools right now, Mike Rowe has a huge one. And he says the hardest thing he has to do is give money away because that's a work ethic based scholarship, meaning you have to do the work. So you have to do the applications, do these different things. And he just can't get students to do that. The hardest thing he has to do with a scholarship isn't getting money to give away. The hardest part is finding people who have the work ethic to give it to, right? If you just show up and do an application, there's stuff out there for you guys to get ahead and succeed, but you gotta try, you gotta strive to do it. Life doesn't just, winning the lottery doesn't just happen to everybody. Um, very few and far between your odds are crazy. It's not going to happen. Plan on your choices, building your future and here show up. Don't be absent. We already said that. Okay. Conflict resolution. This is other big skill. Know how to resolve that conflict with your coworker. Don't hold on to grudges, forgive, be lighthearted. Um, and if you have an issue, go talk to them right away. Don't let it linger. Um, and if you have to and they don't deal with it, then you go to your supervisor, right? Work your way up the chain, but don't just talk behind their back. Don't start rumors. That's not how you resolve conflict. You resolve it by going to them and figuring it out, right? And so lots of times there's two sides, as you can see, both sides see it in their way. They might not even know they did anything wrong. Lots of times we hurt people's feelings and we don't even know it. So own up to it. Um, when you mess up, deal with it and keep moving on. Don't let it get in the way. If you learn to work with everybody, again, you're going to be a lot happier and just enjoy enjoy the experience a whole lot more. Don't be the grump that no one wants to work with. All right, same thing, supervisor. Go and talk to them. What's the issue? Lots of times we don't like our supervisor. 
not because they're a jerk, but because we don't like to do our job well. And we don't like it when someone says we're, we're sucky, right? We don't like that. And so own up to it. Lots of times they're just trying to, we'll talk about good criticism right here. Constructive criticism is good. My boss, he was a perfectionist my, before I became a teacher. It was, it had to be perfect. And until it was perfect, he didn't say good job. He would point out the flaws. Why? Because he was charging high end dollars for these clients and he wants to give them the best product and telling me if it's, I did a crappy job and being like, oh, look, that's awesome. That's not helping me improve. And so the criticism, constructive criticism is to make you a better employee, to make you a better worker. And so there's always something we can keep improving on. So it's okay. It doesn't mean that they hate you or think you're a terrible person. They're just trying to make you the best you can be. So get some little bit of tough skin and accept the constructive criticism, right? Learn to improve yourself. Even if the guy is a jerk, usually maybe what he's pointing out is helpful for you to become better. Look for a new job so you don't have to work for a jerk, but take that criticism and get better, right? That's how pro athletes get to where they are. Someone tells them, hey, you're not good enough, and then it challenges them and pushes them to become better, right? They want the coaches who are going to tell them to do it the right way, right? And so work for people who are going to criticize, who are going to challenge you to become better and better, right? All right, and when you're giving constructive criticism, to other people, all right, so this is how to make sure you don't sound like a jerk. Make sure you are using positive words. Don't be condescending, right? Don't come down on them. Say, hey, this looks great, but here you messed up this cut right here. And then offer a solution. If you aren't giving them a solution to fix the problem you're addressing, you're just a jerk. Constructive criticism is, hey, you messed this up and here's how to do it better. So if you don't know how to tell them to do it better, don't say it because you're just a jerk. Don't be that guy. Offer constructive criticism, meaning, hey, you messed this up. Here's how we could do this better. And so that is going to make you a lot more fun to be around. And as someday, if you're ever over top, you have authority over someone else, say you are a foreman on a job site, your workers are going to respect you a whole lot more if you are this way. And here, um, don't overdo it. Don't have a long list of things. Stay very specific to the thing at hand. If they mess this up, only address this. Don't put everything all in one speech. Do each one at a time and do it quick. If there's something, fix the issue right away. Um, don't let it linger. All right, again, receiving it, just like I said before, learn it from it. Don't take it personally. Don't get defensive. If you messed up, you messed up. It's okay, don't make an excuse. He doesn't want an excuse. He just wants it right. And so don't waste the time by getting defensive. Don't waste, um, stuff by getting your angry, don't hurt yourself. It's no fun. What's the point of walking around all day angry? Why not be happy, right? So control yourself, control your choices, build your future, right? You're the key to your success. All right, and this is um, part two.